It may be the most overperformed surgery in all of medicine. Stick around and I'll tell you what it is. This is the Surgeon Unmatched. I see it all the time. People come in and say, Doc, I tore my meniscus. I need it fixed. Well, let me back up here and explain things a little bit. First of all, the meniscus, we have two of them in each knee, is a padded C-shaped structure that sits between the bones and the knee joint. We have a medial meniscus over here and a lateral meniscus over here. It's what we call fibrocartilage. It's mostly inert tissue without blood supply, without nerve endings, kind of like a fingernail except for the very, very outer portion. Now, when we talk about meniscus tears, there's really two types we're referring to, a traumatic tear in a healthy younger patient where they damage normal tissue through generally pretty high energy trauma, like a football injury or basketball or sports or snow skiing, that sort of thing. Those behave much differently than what we call degenerative meniscal tears. And many people by the age of 30 and certainly by the age of 40 will begin to develop degenerative tears in the meniscus. And what happens is this firm rubbery structure starts to get kind of gooey. We call it mucinous degeneration. And you'll see it on the MRI a lot of times is this signal change inside of the meniscus. And when it reaches the surface, we call that a tear. Most of the time when people are over the age of 40 or 50 and they present with a meniscal tear, it's what we call a degenerative tear. Now, trauma may have exacerbated it. It may have aggravated it, but they behave very differently. Yet I still see it all the time. People come in and say, I tore my meniscus, I need it fixed. Well, as I mentioned, they're generally not repairable. And the surgery to take care of that is to actually go in and remove the meniscus. And I thought we had solved this over 20 years ago. Around 2002, there was a landmark study by Bruce Mosley at the VA hospital in Houston, Texas, actually where I went to medical school. And they showed that any kind of surgery for degenerative changes or arthritis was largely ineffective. And then 10 years later, I think the final nail in the coffin came with this Finnish study that used sham surgery. They essentially took people who had degenerative meniscal tears and half of them got a knee arthroscopy and a debridement, what we call a meniscectomy, where they shave down and remove the meniscus. The other half, they just put to sleep and put some scars on them and told them they had surgery. And guess what? There was no clear winner. In fact, in some regards, the sham group did slightly better than the group that had arthroscopy. So why does this matter? It's because that surgery likely has a negative effect on your knee. Cleaning it out, removing cartilage is only going to accelerate the arthritis process. And just the act of surgery by mechanisms we don't fully understand clearly has a deleterious effect on the knee joint and causes it to progress to arthritis more rapidly. The other role the meniscus plays, as you can see, I mentioned it's a pad, but it's also because it's C-shaped. It allows for the rounded end of the femur to match more appropriately with the relatively flat top portion of the tibia. It's called the chalk block phenomenon that you see. I just had a flat tire the other day and they put chalk blocks under my wheels so that they didn't roll around. But that also is another function of the meniscus. So it also plays a little bit of a role in stability. But the major function of the meniscus is to provide padding, protection, reduce the forces on the knee. In fact, as recently as the early to mid 70s, the standard surgery for young athletes if they tore their meniscus was they would open up the knee and totally remove the meniscus. And they thought you didn't really need it, that it was kind of like an appendix. But literally within about 15 years, people started developing arthritis on x-ray. And that was very concerning. So they realized then at that point in time that the meniscus plays a big role in reducing the force, the stress on this really important articular cartilage surface that we only have so much in our lifetime that we want to last our lifetime. And it generally has little to no regenerative capacity. I've told you my story. I injured my knee. I injured the meniscus and the chondral surface back when I was in high school. It wasn't a repairable tear, so they went in and cleaned it up and debrided it. And that's probably pretty reasonable in a young athlete. The problem is back then it was commonplace to go in and clean out the knee. So I had two more arthroscopies throughout my college football playing career. That undoubtedly led to rapid development of arthritis and my need for a knee replacement at a relatively young age. We still see this surgery performed all the time. And yes, you can get some short-term relief from it, but you typically pay a long-term price for it. And that is 
shorten the lifespan of your knee, more rapid progression of the arthritis. Why does the arthritis progress so rapidly after arthroscopy? Well, when you rapidly change the cartilage environment, the knee doesn't have time to adapt and to improve with time. One of the ways the knee adapts to decline in cartilage, this padding system in the knee, is the bone at the surface becomes more dense. The analogy I like to use is if you started walking barefoot, you would get blisters or cuts or scrapes tear up the skin, but eventually you develop calluses. Well, the bone sort of calluses, what we call sclerosis at the surface. By the time we replace people's knees, that bone is so dense because it's adapted to the slow loss of cartilage over time that it's almost like cutting through granite. There are appropriate indications for arthroscopy in younger patients. It has a very valuable role. A lot of times their meniscal tissue can be repaired. Frequently they tear through an area that has blood supply. But when you're dealing with an older adult, that meniscal tissue is almost never repairable. And so all that can be done is remove those torn pieces. People say, well, then what am I supposed to do about it? Well, your knee actually adapts pretty nicely to it. As I mentioned, your bone at the surface becomes hardened in the areas where you have less padding. You probably have some kind of polishing effect or smoothing effect. And this is again, where I go back to the value of a stationary bike, that repetitive motion without stressing the knee too much, I think helps accelerate the improvement. But the overwhelming majority of people will improve and spontaneously get better without surgery. That's called the natural history. Yet all the time we deal with people still wanting an MRI, wanting to know if they have torn their meniscus and wanting to have surgery for it. And my advice to you, except for these rare circumstances, is if you're not having mechanical symptoms, for example, a piece of the meniscus getting locked or catching in your knee over an extended period of time, then you're probably better off treating that non-surgically. Physical therapy has been shown to help. We can use anti-inflammatory medicines to help control the symptoms. Generally, there's some kind of activity modification involved, activities that involve deeper squatting, twisting type maneuvers typically aggravate that meniscus tear. And one way I sort of describe it or analogize the meniscus tear it's kind of like a hangnail. You don't really have feeling in that portion of the meniscus that's torn, but it will tug and pull on areas that do have feeling. So eventually, even if it's a large flap, very often times your body will digest it. It'll break off. It'll smooth down. We don't know for sure what happens, but it does tend to get better. How long does it take? Well, sometimes a while. I've seen sometimes go up to six months. If after six months they're still having a lot of pain that limits them, then I consider surgery for them. But I spend most of my time counseling people to try to not go to surgery for this. The goal is to make your knee last your lifetime. And that surgery is almost certainly going to shorten the lifespan of your knee. There are a few other indications where arthroscopy might be of some benefit to people with degenerative changes in their knees. That would be if you had a loose body, a piece of bone that's floating around and getting caught in the knee. That's a very dramatic event. Certainly if you had an infection. And there's a few other small indications for it. But for degenerative meniscal pathology, the evidence is really quite clear that you don't need to do it. Stick it out and in time your knee will get better. Yet I still see this being done all the time. And unfortunately, it shortens the lifespan of their knee. They end up seeing me sooner for a knee replacement because of it. Additionally, arthroscopy for the knee can actually complicate the results of a knee replacement. There's data that if you perform a knee replacement within nine to 12 months of a knee arthroscopy, the results are much worse and the risk of infection is considerably higher. So generally if people have the surgery and unfortunately their knee declines, then we typically try to make them wait it out. Let some of those adaptive changes in the knee take place, see if they can get through it. But I see it many times over, someone will go for an arthroscopy for a degenerative meniscal tear and within a year that knee went from looking not too bad on x-ray to being completely bone on bone. And as I mentioned, in a lot of my other episodes, the body does well if we slowly see change, but these rapid declines or removal of our cartilage system causes severe pain and very difficult to deal with. So why do we still see this so often? Well, I think a lot of us are trained in an era. We get an MRI and it says meniscal tear. We say, see meniscus tear, fix meniscus tear. Surgery, we're surgeons, we fix things. And that sticks around a little bit. Also, sometimes these problems are pretty painful and it's hard to kind of counsel people through it and reassure them that, look, this is going to get better, but it's going to take some time. And very frequently, they'll go across the street and find someone that'll scope the knee for them. And I'm not criticizing other surgeons who do this. Like I said, sometimes I will succumb to it if it's been a long time and people aren't getting better. But I really, really counsel them heavily, like, look, this may help you short term, but you're almost certainly going to pay a long term price for it. So I really try to have them hold out 
with that main exception, like I said, what we call mechanical symptoms. If something's locking or getting stuck in the knee, if it's a big flap or piece of tissue, it can cause damage to other parts of the knee. That is an indication in my mind to consider arthroscopy for degenerative pathology in the knee, particularly of the meniscus. Overall, arthroscopy is still a valuable tool and it's still one of the most common orthopedic surgeries performed in the United States today. Estimates said that it, there's over a million knee arthroscopies performed yearly. Majority of those are for proper indications. Majority of those are going to be in injury patterns in younger patients with healthy tissue that's amenable to repair. And you can do remarkable things through it now with ACL reconstruction, other ligament reconstruction surgeries, cartilage repair that, that it has a real meaningful role for. But the evidence is overwhelmingly clear that arthroscopy for degenerative changes in the knee, particularly degenerative meniscal tears, as well as arthritis, really has no benefit and maybe some degree of harm. Thank you for watching. We'll see you next time.